So let's talk about, you know, kind of what you see right now as the actual parallels in terms of, you know, spending, open borders, inflation, the whole like cloward Piven thing of collapsing the country is yeah. being done by design. We're in a controlled demolition of America. And you kind of have to look at the past to understand really how fast it's going. Well, it's like Charlie Robinson calls it the controlled demolition of the uh, American of America. empire is, is exactly what we're experiencing right now. Right. And I think the thing that's interesting is, first of all, in these conversations, I find that people just don't know a lot about the Roman Empire. I think it's been really interesting to me right. because it gets back to what you were talking about of our education system doesn't tell people about this at all. And if you look at Rome, it actually had a pretty substantial welfare system um, towards the end of the Republic and all the way through the empire. Every citizen in Rome was actually allowed to have a certain amount of grain. So people were being fed on a daily basis. And this goes along with what's called the Roman climate optimum. So about 200 BC to around 400 AD, there's this really good temperate period where they're allowed to able to grow a lot of grain. And most of their grain would have come from Egypt because it's the breadbasket of that area. They start to have some climate change toward the end of the third century. And what starts happening is you have grain prices doubling, tripling, quadrupling, and you have all these people to feed. So you have that is kind of one part of it. Another part of it is in the third century, the son of Marcus Aurelius is this guy named Commodus. And Commodus absolutely bankrupts the empire. He's one of only two emperors to actually be drugged through the streets of Rome and then have his body thrown into the Tiber. They hated him that much. Wow. And then what ends up happening after him is you have what's called the barrack emperors, barracks meaning military barracks. So these emperors would basically be declared emperor by their army and whoever had the most troops and the most money would be the next emperor. So you have in that time period, about 47 different guys in less than a hundred years claim to be emperor. Wow. And so it's destroying the money because they're adding other currencies to the money or other metals. So by the time you get to 270, the silver coin is actually bronze. There's no silver left in it. And that's the problem you have is you have inflation going wild, but now you add into this as well. And this is, as you can see, there's, there's getting a lot of parallels here. As you get into this as well, towards the end of Marcus Aurelius's rule, they have a, a pandemic where they lose about 10% of the actual empire and they need soldiers. So what do you do? You start bringing in people off the provinces or you start bringing barbarian tribes to fight in your army. And then what ends up happening as you get into this third century crisis of generals raising an army, declaring themselves emperor, well, they need more troops. So you have them debasing the currency, you have the prices of food skyrocketing, and you have people coming into Rome that actually have no tie to Rome just to fight. And oh. what ends up happening toward the end of the, the beginning of the fifth century those people start turning on Rome. And that's when you have the sack of Rome in 410. So it is a very, very interesting world that we're headed into, though I think we're early in it, but I see a lot of parallels. Oh my God, for sure. And that other thing is getting really, really dangerous, which is the uh, importing of people from all over the world. I I've talked to many people. It it's not from South America as much. It, there's a lot from China, Middle East, uh, yes. Africa, all over the world are coming through our Southern border and we don't know who's coming here at all. And if they are organized and a lot of people hypothesize, including Michael Yan, who's done uh, incredible work and Ann Vandersteel, that um, they're coming here as a army. Um, and, and people are very scared of that all over the country as they're seeing an influx where they are. And I, I think people, um, a long time ago, I was in, still in New York when people were showing me this, um, that they were kind of starting to organize this demand citizenship hashtag. I think it was the democratic socialists of America, uh, first put this out and then it's, it's slowly grown, but now you see them all out there demanding amnesty, demanding citizenship, demanding all this stuff while they're also in many places, allowing them to uh, join police forces, uh, giving in New York, they're giving government jobs preference to illegals right now. Um, this is happening all over the country. And then Dick Durbin, one of the worst people in our government, is suggesting that these illegals should be in our military when we know the military has been so degraded and kind of weeded out of anyone that wasn't ideologically aligned with the globalist leftist, uh, you know, Obama doctrine. So here we are. Um, 
verging on having a standing army in our country that was allowed in that could easily turn on us and have no, uh, first of all, the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, they don't even probably know about, let alone care about. And they don't have any allegiance or alliance to this country, this land, our history or our future. It's really just they're here and we don't know who is controlling these people either. I mean, is it are, are these people funded by Muslim Brotherhood? Are they funded by the U.N.? Are they funded by our own government? Um, it's all very serious. But, you know, the parallels are not new. And this is basically not just happened in the Roman Empire or many other times. And this yes. cra- also we're watching this happen all over the world. So we have to remember the Roman Empire kind of ruled the world. So I, I think we need to also look at it on the global scale. Yeah, it's interesting because it, it's and I would, uh, if you haven't spoken to her, there's this woman, uh, Dr. Olga Ravasi. She's an expert to, in uh, global affairs. And that's the thing she's been talking about is it kind of seems like it's the West versus everything else. It's kind of the Western forces versus whatever it, this is that's coming in. Right. It's not just the fall of America. It's actually the fall of the West. And I think it's very interesting to dive into this. And there was I was trying to find the, this woman's name um, while, while you were saying that as well. There's this congresswoman from New York, um, Congresswoman. Uh, Yvette Clark. Um, And this was about a year ago. Greg Abbott actually posted this video from her saying, I just need more people in my district just for redistricting purposes. It's like they're saying the quiet part out loud is if we can bring in more people, we can change congressional representation, whether they vote or not. And that's a scary, scary thing to consider. And I think the thing people don't know about Rome. um, So there's a new Gladiator movie out, which I don't I'm on the fence if I want to see it or not. But the emperor that they have in it is Caracalla. And Caracalla in 212 actually takes 30 million people in the Roman provinces and gives them citizenship overnight. So now they put it citizenship without the vote as opposed to citizenship with the vote. So they're entitled to all these social programs. But the bigger problem is they can be taxed because he's bankrupted the Treasury. So we've tried this before, and that expedites the collapse. And it's very interesting to look at the third century as a model for us, because I know even Kamala Harris has talked about price controls. Well, price controls was one of the worst reforms of Diocletian in the late 280s. He put in price controls and what happened? It made inflation go faster and it created a very, very active black market where people didn't want to yeah. use currency to do it. So it's it's interesting the direction we're headed. Yeah. And it created scarcity, scarcity that would not be there if they didn't do that. And um, yeah, this is really important to kind of understand that uh, human nature is human nature. And, you know, in, as long as we can fend off the transhumanists and the fourth industrial revolution, we still are, in fact, human. So, so you have to look over all of this and say, well, you know, who benefits at this point? Because all of the moves that are being made are kind of rob Peter to pay Paul. 